be the did you break that yet i don't know if i have probably not Shit. we got an official <laughs> scoop right here Welcome, everybody. We are live, not on the casting couch this time. We are on a different couch. This is the Sets and Rest podcast, and I am your host, Nick Simmons, with my lovely co-host, Logan J. Kiros. That's me. And uh, we got a special jacked guest today. You guys might know him. I'm, uh, I'm bringing this down. I don't want to show my delts. Let's see. <laughs> somebody told me, somebody, my buddy who's a bodybuilder goes, don't you want shoulders someday? <laughs> <laughs> your arms are actually bigger than they look from afar, if that makes sense, because like... I don't know if I have body what dysmorphia. What a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have skinny arms. My, my arms are actually disproportionately skinny. When I was in, like working out a lot, and my, my ex-wife, I said, I don't know, my body. She goes, skinny arms? And I was like, Holy <laughs> shit, you read my mind and my body. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Brian Callen. If you guys obviously know him, you guys have Give them time to cheer. And uh, give a small applause break, fighter and the yeah. kid. Been in Hangover. You've seen him in plenty of movies, TV shows, yeah. Goldbergs, plenty School, of shows. You name it. That was the one that actually, when we were at Omaha, that's the one everybody remembers you from. Uh, Goldberg. The Goldberg. Yeah, it was seven years. Yeah. You know, yeah. He was a popular character. Well, they you... actually gave me my own show over it. Really? Yeah. You were the my coach, own right? Spinoff. Yeah. yeah. So. You know. They just saw you and they're like, "That's a Jack dude. He's got to be gym coach." <laughs> yeah. They're <laughs> like, "He's got great legs." <laughs> hey, 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 that kind of a role like anytime you get something like that like you spend all your time in Hollywood trying to be successful and then they give you you get this part you're offered because somebody else turned it down I think Will Sasso turned it down and then they were like let's try Brian Callen and then I looked at the role and I was like I'll just play it like my dad okay <laughs> and that was it like yeah. the guy loves Ronald Reagan in the 80s and I was like all right I'll be my That's dad he on. loves America Ronald Reagan and fuck you know and and protein shakes. So I. Uh, Is your dad uh, from Florida? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He may as well be. But I just played it. I played it like, um, like an American man who has no confusion about right, wrong, male, female, America, and the rest of the world. You know all that stuff. That's basically us. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's that's what we love to hear. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of how you go through life, whether you know it or not. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. you you go through life. It's really hard to go through life um, keeping the 15 things you're supposed to keep in your mind going at the same time. You can't run a business that way. Mm -hmm. You can't, when you're running a restaurant and you have 30 employees, you can't be thinking about pronouns necessarily. Yeah. What you'll do is you'll go, okay, what's your pronoun? Just tell me what you got to do. We got to get food out there. Whatever, mm -hmm. you, whatever it is you, you want me to call you, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But I'm not thinking about keeping anybody down. I'm thinking about making money. Exactly. And yeah. making money mm -hmm. so hard when you own a business mm -hmm. that, that everybody hates you anyway. So it's a thousand things like that. You know, uh, Jeff Bezos, I saw a clip on, uh, and he was saying, I own 16% of Amazon. It's a $1 trillion company, Jeez. which means I created about $680 billion for other people. That's insanity. That yeah. is ridiculous. But also, have you seen how jacked he got? Yes. He's Fucking, a big boy. He looks like he's like a monster now. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> what happens when you become a trillionaire. And you and once you get divorced, you're like, I need to get that fucking... I need, I need a new body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shave, get tan. But I worry about being like my age, and I think he's the same age I am. And like you want to be careful about not looking like the guy who now all of a sudden is getting tattoos, shaving his crisis. body. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. embarrassing. Jeff Bezos is having a midlife crisis right now. He's getting jacked, listening to butt shots on boats. <laughs> well, yeah, because you know, no matter what, how much money you have, you, you know, people, men want to be admired for their raw, physical caveman masculinity that's why we yeah. do this that's, yeah. dude, that's all we, <laughs> they, care about. we want we want ultimately men we want men to want, fear us and to be us they want to be us and we want women to be with us mm -hmm. that's like what it is we want us to think how liver king thinks of himself for the most part yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. yeah. exactly so you, yeah you have all you know who liver king is i do have you seen you saw you put a response video out to rogan the other day what did he say he's because rogan was basically saying like you can't look like that as a natural basically that, that would probably be true and he put a response video saying that that is because like, he's saying that he's a primal and people just don't understand is he saying he's is natural. he saying he's natural he's saying yeah. he's all natural he gets that he's way from eating down. testicles he's doubling down <laughs> yeah. that. what what blows our mind about him even more than just the the insanity of him saying he's natural is this just the fact that he acts like he would survive in the caveman days. Oh, yeah. He thinks that's what cavemen looked like. Yeah. 
And, just, and when in fact, up. anybody who knows anything, the reason why you put, when you starve yourself and you don't lose fat, like is because back in the caveman days, if you went a long period of time without eating, you would die. So your metabolism naturally just slows itself down and you get, you gain fatter because you will have energy sources to live off of. Yeah. Him is the exact opposite. He would live for like three days at most yeah. in the prehistoric times. I don't times. know why. I don't think he needs to like justify whether he's natty or not. Like, the, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a great personality. Mm -hmm. He's fun. Yeah. He's part of the American experience and dream. He's turned, I, he probably started with a lot of money. He seems to have private jets, but he, he turned well, his this supplement. passion. Is that what it is? He makes a million dollars a month off just selling. Okay. River, so he's a, raw he, liver. he's a good businessman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the guy, the guy, yes. the guy figured out how to use his body and his example to turn you know it into a 12 million dollar a year business for yeah. himself that's a big deal that's not easy to do to do just off tiktok basically yeah and yeah. he's and he's fun mm -hmm. he's not hurting yeah. anybody he's fun. He actually now, has we, we all love to tear somebody down but he's mm -hmm. actually uh, you know to me the liver king is a classic example of the american dream he thought outside the box he did crazy shit and how do you not love a guy like that yeah oh we love him and Again. he he kind of explained it on uh a podcast recently where he was saying like not he didn't deny t or he did deny taking steroids but he was saying like yeah and I can't say like if I said like oh I'm taking steroids and stuff a lot of people would look at him and be like well he's taking steroids I can't look like that or they kind of well so from yeah, his point of view yeah that's what they I limit mean themselves. like it's not like so he he might I, I heard he might do fighter and the kid oh, or shit. somebody reached out but I'm not going to ask him about steroids. I don't give a shit about that. No, yeah. you need to find that, out what he's really about. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I'm not I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the man. He's interesting. He's a businessman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He came up with a creative way to make money. Yeah. And if he is taking something, I don't give two shits about that. Yeah. Well, you know, the, he already is eating. He's already an extremist. Mm -hmm. He's already eating like bone marrow drinking <laughs> blood. Yeah. He's doing all this shit, mm -hmm. you know? And so many people are trying to copy off him now, too, to the point where it's going to oh, be yeah. insane. Like, I don't know if you saw the girl who drinks uh, bull piss because she takes buffalo, steroids, right? but she tries uh, buffalo, buffalo piss. Buffalo piss. People yeah. are going to get mad at you in the comments if you say bull piss. <laughs> it means fucking buffalo piss. Yeah, buffalo the, piss. The fans do get mad when we misspeak a, a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> we just had about 300 hate comments because he's so bad with celebrities' it's names so and bad. faces that he called Gerard Butler. No, you called Gerard yeah. Butler Russell a fat Russell Crowe by accident. No, I think I, yeah, something like that. Honest mistake. Yeah, I get them mixed up, but honest mistake. It happens. But we actually went through a whole list of people because he doesn't watch TV, doesn't watch movies, and we went through, and I was actually shocked the celebrities that he does and doesn't know. Like the one that blew my mind the most, he's never seen or heard of Sandra Bullock, and never seen no or heard of Drew Barrymore. Where'd you grow up? Uh, out here, L.A. Azerbaijan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought the whole time I thought Drew Barrymore. I got. I thought it was Halle Berry. So but, I thought but it was to a black be fair, woman. those those like uh, Sandra Bullock and Drew Barrymore were famous when you were really young. They've yeah. not been famous. They haven't done a lot of See? stuff I for guess at I'm least just ten myself, years. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, how old are you? I'm 28, 29 yeah. now, actually. So yeah. so they were doing shit when you were in like high school, young in high school. They were actually at the height of their prime or their, their stardom when you, were in, you weren't in high school. So there's no reason you would actually know them that well. Yeah, I know more like the TikTok stars. That's, that's <laughs> who I know. You know MMA fighters and Marvel characters. Yeah, that's, that's it. So one of the things that we've, we actually had, uh, a lot of fans were asking us to do these specific topics. Uh, one of the ones was actually... <laughs> Uh, Am I natural? Actually, <laughs> we get to that? Well, we get that. We get to that at the end. Sorry, sorry. Um, basically, they're asking what are the biggest myths and us debunking them of fitness. And I figured a couple of them we can go over, which are I'd say the top when it comes to fitness mistakes, is people thinking number one would be people thinking carbohydrates make you fat. Like that yeah, one is the one, one that blows my mind. Really. People really think that so, carbs so, make you fat. So I was, I would say, I would have asked that question. You would have, yeah. Yeah. So in other words, if I, so carbs don't make you fat, or they do not. So carbs are what are are what give you energy for your workouts, and it's the preferred method, not only for your workouts but for your brain, because your brain feeds off glucose. So it's the it's this way you're thinking properly and functioning properly. You want. Okay, but let me ask you this: If I ate, if I ate a bowl of broccoli. And, 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 and a chicken breast, mm -hmm. okay? Or if I ate a chicken breast on two pieces of, I don't know, heavy bread. Mm -hmm. 
wouldn't I, wouldn't the bread be, it would, it would break down faster, right? So mm -hmm. in other words, it, it, it sort of oxidizes into glucose quicker than say a slow carb yeah, uh -huh. uh, like like a broccoli. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's but preferred to use certain to use certain carbs at certain times. Right, but then doesn't that doesn't that also like cause my body to shoot out a bunch of insulin? It does, and so then it'll block my cell from using the fatty acids. But here's the thing: so what it actually ends up boiling down to is calories in versus calories out, because just because one has more fat storage doesn't mean the fat. But not all calories are created equal, right? Well, calorie is just a form of measurement for. I understand, but, yeah. but it's 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 an energy mm -hmm. calculation. But yeah, it's you, like saying an in inches. But 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 still, cal like so when when um we had a, we had an obesity epidemic that started in the seventies. Mm -hmm. We still have it. Yeah, but wasn't that because or part of the reason was because the the belief was you have to eat low fat, high fiber diets, which caused people to eat a lot of carbs, very little fat. Well, I think more of the fact is because most people don't actually take into consideration how many calories they're putting into their body and fats are actually way more calorie dense. So a carbohydrate per gram is four calories and a cal and a, a fat per gram is nine calories. So each gram of fat is <laughs> yeah, double the amount. If you're, but, but I'm also saying that like you, you don't you, I mean, don't you gain weight if you eat foods that produce more insulin no you gain you you hold on to more f your body holds on to more uh fat, fat when you're taking in when more calories than you actually put out because it's a energy in versus energy out it's the the basically um the law of thermodynamics where if but the body isn't a thermodynamic machine in uh, terms of it's not a closed system right so put it this way if you take just because you're taking like you have an insulin spike does not mean you're guaranteed to put on more fat than someone who's taking in lower calories. You know what I'm saying? But insulin does play a factor in weight gain. It so affects the way your body uses calories. Yes. Sugar. So someone who has like I don't know if you've heard of PCOS, which is like a problem that a lot of girls could come up with, which is uh, polycyclic ovarian syndrome, which is where their insulin insulin plays a bigger factor in their metabolism. Just because they're taking the insulin affects them differently, the only thing that matters is they need to take in less calories now because of the insulin. Problems. Yeah. So some people, like some cultures, for example, have a harder time processing carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. They become insulin resistant faster. They say Samoans. Samoans, uh, yes. You know, mm -hmm. like people from which uh, is why Poly introducing Polynesian. the American diet to them is what led to a huge obesity yeah. problem. Yeah. So what is that? I mean. There are so so the foods. I I, I thought can actually that, break it down pretty easily. Yeah, but, but I thought foods create a hormonal response, mm -hmm. and some foods produce a positive hormonal response. Others don't, right? So mm -hmm. if I ate, if I ate just a, like a ton of Cheerios mm -hmm. versus chicken breast and berries, for sure. Yeah, well, I would have a different. I would have a. I would certainly have a different metabolic response to to either food. Well, yeah, because the protein itself, protein with the chicken breast, is a little more thermoge uh, uh, thermogenic. Okay. Because your body ends up having to heat itself up when it actually has protein. That's okay. why they say don't have it too close to bed because it affects your body's temperatures, uh, and it's a little harder to get a better night's sleep if you have too much protein before that's bed. That's for sure with me. Yeah. So, like, sure. and you'll burn more calories digesting the protein as exactly. opposed to digesting That's 100% with, the with me. Oh, mm -hmm. is that what it is too? Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then where does insulin play a factor? So it'll what it will affect is what your so it's called a resting metabolic rate in your body, which is how much your body burns at rest. And the people who have when they have insulin problems, their resting like my resting metabolic rate, like if I absolutely did nothing, just sat on a couch completely still the whole day and did nothing, because of the amount of muscle I have in my body and calculated my body fat percentage and just bodily functions, my resting metabolic rate is about 2150. Like two, but when an mm -hmm. insulin molecule attaches to the cell, mm -hmm. doesn't it block the cell from using its fat stores to use fatty acids as fuel? Well, what, what actually ends up happening is you, it will affect your resting metabolic rate. Right. So, so what so, you do but have you to do is... you want your body, if you, you want to lose weight, you want your body burning fat... You want your body. You want the cells of mm -hmm. your body using the store, the fat stores. You don't want the. You don't want your body craving more glucose, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be running more on fatty acids. Well, what it boils down to at the end is because it's affecting your rest of metabolic rate. That means you have to make a change in your 
uh, calories in because when the, it, the insulin <laughs> affects your resting metabolic rate, that means just that's why we tell everybody on our podcast don't listen to the online calculators because you could have a problem with insulin resistance or some type of hormonal disorder right. where your resting metabolic rate isn't this generic. So hormones thing. do play a factor. They do, of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah that's right. why every like testosterone, another hormone that makes a big difference. You know, that'll all they do is change your rest, like resting metabolic rate. But at the end of the day, what it all boils down to is the calories in versus the calories out. Okay. It's just what those hormones do. Like, granted, if you are someone who's insulin resistant, you, you want to actually eat. It won't be optimal to be eating things that are going to cause spikes and declines and stuff like that because then you're kind of just putting yourself at a disadvantage. Okay. You know? Hmm. Yeah, I think for, like, the normal person, just like the average person, it the effects it has on you, on like on your, your hormones and stuff, unless you're doing like an extreme diet where you're like having all carbs, like that's obviously mm -hmm. not good, but it's so like insignificant. Like if there is a difference, it's not like a huge difference mm -hmm. in the calories you're burning. Or, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like for the few people that do have insulin and hormonal problems, obviously that they're a small percentage, they're a smaller percentage of people. But those people, they have to actually, it's a little harder to find your met resting metabolic rate because you kind of have to do it through trial and error. Mm -hmm. So you have to find through, basically through eating, and this is what I do when I coach people, you have to find through eating certain calories, see where your body gains and where it loses at a certain calorie range. Because right. then you could find out what their, um, like basically their midpoint is. Right. That's fucking complicated shit, man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But Jesus. like the basic boil, because boil, I, why I said carbs make you fat, it's not the carbs that are making you fat. It's the carbs, if you have, like if you the, have that. The amount of carbs. Yeah, like, well, it, yes. If you're taking in more carbs than you need, it just, it just, it's more calories than your body needs. I think that was the deepest we ever did, like dove in on everything. No, I'm actually kind of glad yeah. you did that. The Normally we just, we're just like, yeah. Think fucking... you're playing around? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think you guys are dealing with <laughs> a fucking amateur? <laughs> yeah. So the second myth that I actually wanted to bring up was that uh, working out in the heat actually makes you burn more calories, which you would think it you like sweat more. you would think because yeah. you sweat more. But what actually ends up happening, you actually, if you look at it, you actually end up looking at the the data. People who work out in heat, <laughs> what ends up happening is they actually don't have the same output as someone who's working out in the air conditioned room. So they might end up like sweating and that burns a slight fraction more. But what ends up happening is they're not have, having the same output as someone who is actually in a comfortable area with fans on them and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so you might be sweating more and losing more water weight. But the person who's in a cooler room, who's actually at a more comfortable temperature, is actually going to burn more because they're actually able to put more like when it comes down to on the graphs, they're able to put more. Energy, energy. exert yeah. more energy. Yes, okay. that's the word. He yeah. got lost in my eyes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're able to exert more energy. And also, if you're working out, and this is what's actually interesting to me, I've looked at some of the data, and you burn more calories when you're cold than when you're hot because your body wants to keep at a certain oh, heat sense. temperature oh. wise. So yeah. it ends up burning more. Your body's regulating. It's exactly. always yeah. having to regulate back shivering down. A Same bit. thing back yeah. like with the yeah. protein where your body has to regulate itself. Yeah, you burn to get a lot of calories shivering, man. You do. Take it mm -hmm. from a survivalist. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, tell my mom that. My mom, she'll, it'll be like 110 degrees outside and she'll put on a hoodie and sweats and she'll go in the garage and she'll turn the heater on. She's insane. And she'll come out just like dripping sweat and she's like, yeah, I got a good workout, and I walked for like <laughs> ten minutes. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> what's, your, what's your nationality? Let me guess. Are you half Filipino, half American? I get that all the time. I'm a half Mexican, half okay. American. Yeah. All right. I good, don't know where the good I, combo you, but mm -hmm. you people think you're Filipino. And, oh. Filipinos think I'm Filipino yeah, I know. all the time. I know. Yeah. Do you get that? You get Filipino. A lot? Fil I was living in Vegas for a while. Uh -huh. A bunch of Filipinos out there. Whenever I would go out to bars, Filipinos would come up to me and they'd be like, "Yo, what's up?" I, there's like a very tight bond between That's those awesome. people. That's awesome. Yeah. So I just started to say, "Yeah," because I would be. Yeah. I didn't want to disappoint them. Sure. This one actually I thought was kind of funny because we get a bunch of girls because we uh, we went through <laughs> we get a bunch of girls. We went through, no our, deal. Data. <laughs> we went through our we went through our analytics and we are 94 percent male listeners and we have a five we're at five percent women now that'd be the fighter and the kid yeah <laughs> <laughs> and these girls they asked uh this is actually I, I don't think we covered it and it was in the lost files but um they were asking is should i stay away from lifting heavy weights because i'm afraid that i'm going to get too big and look like a man <laughs> and, i hear that all the time which is kind of crazy to me because what a lot of girls don't realize is most of those girls who they're buying those programs from like online, they'll be like, oh, this is the big booty plan to get. And what the, a lot of those influencers do is they make these like small plans that they're not going to get 
too crazy and they're gonna keep on buying these things but what those girls are doing like those girls like the big time influencers those girls are lifting heavy weight they're yeah. squatting heavy weight it's just they don't have the like the hormone production unless they're taking exogenous hormones like Most testosterone of them are, right there's a decent amount, but they're not. A lot of them aren't taking testosterone. They're taking stuff like Anavar, where yeah, it's not yeah, going to have like they're not going to get a deeper voice. You right. know what I mean? So unless you're taking those hormones that are going to make you. When you say heavy weight, does that mean I can only do four or six reps? Do you know what he- I mean? So heavy weight would be like, yeah, in like powerlifting, uh, even. But a lot of those girls are scared to lift weights in general yeah. because they're afraid that they're going to look masculine. But but you can still put weight on, and you can still put muscle on. Mm-hmm. You, well, you, you get, well, when you when you when you're hitting failure at 15 reps, for example, well, right? that's actually more optimal for putting muscle on because that's yeah. you're more in the hypertrophy range than okay. for strength. Because so if I want to, but but if I'm building strength and I'm doing like you know one set and to four sets, you're gonna want to keep four into the, reps I for strength. Say. You want to keep in the lower rep range. It's not as ideal, but that'll for, make you stronger. It's gonna make you stronger more than putting on actual mu- like lean muscle tissue. You also have a better chance of injuring yourself, and if you're you not do doing exactly yeah. what you're that's actually what to. I had yeah. to talk to a client to about today because I told him not to go anywhere near his max and he tried to he was like i just wanted to see and he tried maxing on squats oh, which is such a crazy thing <laughs> you, you know what i'm in jersey i'm in jersey doing a gig and i go to the gym and i've been reading on uh, all up on, on olympic lifting and this fucking idiot i'm like i was probably 43 i don't know what i was 40 let's call it maybe maybe a little older old enough <laughs> and like you know 170 pounds of bullshit and i'm doing like I'm doing snatch and cleans. I'm oh. doing fucking. I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing all this. Like I've got weights in my hand. and I'm doing all this like jumping isometrics and shit. Mm-hmm. And and I'm doing like I'm. I'm and then I'm trying to deadlift like way. I'm I'm squatting. And this this jacked guy, probably fifty, ex competitive powerlifter, mm-hmm. like you, know, thick as shit. Thank and he you. comes up and he goes, he goes, hey, bro, do you mind? I, I don't want to. I don't mean to be a know it all and everything, but I'm watching you and and. You don't look as experienced, and I'm just telling you, I've been doing this my whole life. What is it you're trying to do? <laughs> I, I, he was so cool. I know. I was like, I was like, I'm just trying to get strong, put on muscle. He goes, and okay. You're probably feeling yourself with music. In, I was doing whatever. Music that way, he, he just he was like, okay, you're doing these lifts with this weight, and you're not doing it properly, and you're gonna something's gonna pop, and I'm telling you. I'm telling you, like the sky is blue, that if you don't understand how to do this specifically and exactly under the right tutelage, you're going to maim yourself. Especially, <laughs> and I, compound, I never forgot. Compound exercises I ne- like that. Yeah, it's and I so stopped much right there. I go, done. I'm listening to you. <laughs> yeah. I fucking, I got you. Thank you very much. I just shut the, I, I was like, I just stopped. Let me ask, did, did it bother you that he came? Because I see people no, in my gym it. sometimes I loved it. where I see them doing things that I know is going to hurt them. And I feel weird since I'm not a worker there to actually approach them and tell them like, because the one thing that I see the most is people will do, they'll grab a kettlebell or a weight and they'll do side bends. And that is just asking for back problems in the future because yeah. your, your lower spine, the lower so lumbar dumb. is not meant to go this way. It's, most, it's supposed to go back and forth and the, the top of your spine is supposed to be able to move. But they're doing all these weighted movements Jesus. to their spine and just slowly doing damage over time. And part of me is like, would it make me an asshole to go up to them and tell them? I don't them, think so. No. Not when you look like you. You're like, look, I'm this, I do this for a living. Yeah. yeah. You can go up and go, I, let me explain something. I had to have somebody explain to me how the lower back worked. Mm. Like your hips are what's mobile, your shoulders. Yeah. Your lower back is to stabilize. It's supposed it's to be. It's not supposed like, to be. Yeah. I changed my life. with My, my lower back always hurt. Mm-hmm. Always. And like I, my life got was cha- My buddy goes, your glutes, dude. You got to work your glutes. And he gave Absolutely. me four exercises for my glutes. He was a D1 football player. Leo Flowers, and uh, changed my whole fuck. I, like never had a problem again. Actually, if you don't mind, tell them some of the exercises that. It Leo was. Flowers. He had me doing bird dogs, where you you know mm-hmm. like it was all kinds of stuff. It was my my posterior tilt. I'd lie on the on the ground and I have my feet this and I just I he's he I don't want to he he had a lot of things he was teaching me so I don't want to miss mm-hmm. but just like bringing your hips up Goop on bridges. each on hand yeah. yeah that but to also just doing like reaching with one leg out and the mm-hmm. opposite of hand like yeah. that on, on all fours. Um, and even doing like a, a fire hydrants where you just kick your leg out, mm-hmm. just building that part of your your muscle in just that area. Yeah. Uh, and then there were some. If you're gonna stretch, 
dynamic stretching is really important, but just being on your back, kicking your leg up and just trying to like, mm -hmm. you know, bringing your toes back, that's fine. Yeah. But stretching is less important. It's not as important as strengthening. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I've learned. One like, thing we kind of preach, which is kind of like the way we look at it, is it, if you're going to stretch, it's something to do after. Unless it's like dynamic before a sport, which kind of can help in some situations. But when it comes to actually weightlifting, it's actually could do more damage doing too much stretching before a workout because then you get your muscles too warm in a sense where it's easier for them to go through. Like, <laughs> like especially when you're doing like pressing movements to actually end up hurting yourself because yeah. they become too loose yeah. so you actually want to it's something to do afterwards where it, it could help with like you know movement and keeping yourself like mobility but otherwise always do it after workout yeah i don't know if you were like with sports and stuff when you were younger it probably started with me i know like when i was very young it was all the just the static stretching you start mm -hmm. and then like when i probably got to like end of middle school it changed to that dynamic mm -hmm. uh, warm warm ups you were supposed to do. Yeah. So it was weird. I was like, oh, I was taught my whole life to warm up like this, and now they're saying you're going to get injured from that. Uh huh. And then it's in a, high yeah, school, we learn yeah. more and more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, football is where I, I first learned that it's so important to do like the the don't do too much. <laughs> it's more dynamic stretching. You know yeah. what I mean? And especially like just doing warm ups that are going to get you ready for what you're doing. Otherwise sitting there and just doing butterfly stretches are not going to, yeah. you know, you're going to hurt yourself because yeah. you loosen up too much. Um, actually, one of the things actually be great if you talked about, because you're, how old are you now? 55. 55. And we have a bunch of, a, a lot of new subscribers that are like around your age where they've actually asked us questions about when it, like longevity and like, yeah. what other things besides like the glute type of stuff has helped? You? I just think like I lift weights three days a week, but I, it's not, not more than 20, 25 minutes, but, it, but it's like, but I'm always doing like pull-ups, dips, uh, always some kind of a goblet squat of mm -hmm. some kind, some kind of a lunge. Because you are, I've, if you ever, if you're watching him on stage, he is one of the most limber dudes yeah. I have ever seen. Yeah, I'm, I've always kept my mobility. Mm -hmm. You know, I always did sports. If, if I'm not boxing, I'm playing tennis. You know, yeah. before that, I was doing jujitsu or wrestling. Mm -hmm. So I was always moving, but, but you know, you don't need to go crazy. The yeah. one thing I know is that just consistency, and I swear to God, 15 minutes of weightlifting the right way, mm -hmm. just those, just goblet squats going deep yeah you know just taking like getting if you can go as as somebody if you can go all the way down and so up, important you know mm -hmm. just that but your spine there's that that expression i think it's a chinese expression you're 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 as old as your spine so <laughs> you can build like i work point. my neck yeah. dude i do shit for my neck i have a whole neck series do you I, do you, like bridges like in wrestling yeah, no i never do bridges i was when, when i wrestled that's all i did yeah but you can't do that shit when you're older that's no. really dangerous <laughs> yeah it's not good for your neck yeah i got but, a thick neck from doing bridges my whole life yeah yeah same thing but when you're older don't do that shit <laughs> there are way better ways the way better exercises to work your neck just just look on youtube mm -hmm. but but i do a lot of pt shit man i do like yeah. i do all kinds of stuff for my rhomboids i do like i had bad shin splints and I looked up and now I take a cable and I just and I and I and I you know I like do yeah. work with mm -hmm. my feet so whenever I have a pain instead of stretching it I look up how to make it stronger mm -hmm. so yeah. I you know you have these in you have these weaknesses in your body like for I when sometimes I would pull my my neck I'd pull this rhomboid right here right mm -hmm. and I just started strengthening that wrong I do that every day or like I do like when I do abs shit it's all down here yeah. I'll do like leg because that's where I'm weak mm -hmm. so I, I I work on what I'm weak at yeah and uh that's actually a pretty important yeah. thing you brought up was you said earlier to the posterior chain I don't think people take into consideration how important it is to have a well-balanced posterior chain because yeah. I've had issues in the past where my I was doing too much lat exercises because I was I just wanted to be as v-shaped oh, as possible because yeah. I thought it looked cool but what I didn't realize was I started because they were getting so strong the middle of my back and uh, like the lower uh, traps were getting weaker because yeah, I was yeah. overdoing balance. balance. I ended up getting to a point where I couldn't do press exercises because it started slowly affecting my shoulders. And I was like, maybe I have shoulder problems. And when I went to an actual doctor, he was like, no, he's like, you actually have some weakness in your middle back, which really hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as you get older, like that, that shit becomes glaring. Mm -hmm. like you, you, you can get away with shit when you're younger, when you're my age and you don't want, I see, I don't want my body in the way. We're going to go play spike ball, volleyball. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the beach right now. 
I, I'll play all day, mm -hmm. but that's because I get myself to a point where I don't want my body in the way. Like yeah. today I just did some light deadlift. Okay. Right. So I'll always do something, even on my off days. So you I keep go and I just do exercises. dips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, like I won't just start doing dips. I'll jump into them. I'll mm -hmm. jump into pull-ups. Okay. I warm the, f I warm up. Mm -hmm. I never used to have to. Now I have to warm up. You got to get ready. You got to get, <laughs> dude, I got to war. I got to go slow. Yeah, but that's the deal, mm -hmm. and and working the belly of the muscle and not taxing the uh, the ligaments and stuff. But it's important too because if you don't do that stuff as you get older, you're so much more prone to injury. Like oh my God. you just see, especially guys when they they hit like usually around forty is when it really starts happening. Where they stop when they stop taking care of themselves, they're not worried about like you. We'll talk about your natty not litter. But uh, when it comes to testosterone, they don't even get it checked. So now they're even more prone to injuries and they're not doing any stretching. They're not doing any exercises. And if you don't take care of yourself, you're just asking to be just your the rest of your life is going to be just a cripple at some point. Yeah. It's, yeah. I noticed that even like after high school or something, a lot of people I played sports with, they just go from sport football every day, you know, mm -hmm. all summer to nothing. Yes. And it's just it's the difference you see it in a year when mm -hmm. you like get back from joining a frat. Yeah. It helps yeah. having a sensitive body. Mm -hmm. I'm sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel the difference in cold. Emotionally? If my clothing is <laughs> not really. But if my clothing feels like I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel good on my body. Yeah. I, I pay attention to food. I can smell some shit. And I'm like, I don't like I don't like the way. What is that? What is that laundry detergent? I drive my girl crazy. She's yeah. just like, Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, what'd you clean these floors with? Like, I'm it, so if you're sensitive, you sound sometimes, like an old Italian man. I am. Dude. <laughs> I am. But I, I, I notice my body. I feel it. If I haven't slept, it's all a bitch. Yeah. You know? And if I haven't slept, I won't work out. Well, that was something you pointed out to me when we were, I forgot, I think we were actually in the Palm Beach gig where I was like exhausted and you're like, that's the key on the road is getting sleep. You gotta. I don't care how long you sleep in. You sleep until you wake up yeah. on the road. Because if I'm doing, you know, if I'm on stage for two and a half hours and I'm working out yeah. and I'm shooting all day, I die. sleep like a motherfucker. Yeah. I don't care. And I'm sure you've I'm done gigs sleeping. where you didn't get the right amount of sleep. And you probably can't even perform even like stand-up. When I shot my special, I made a huge mistake. I was underslept and I felt like shit. Really? Yes, man. It was a problem. I think I saved it though. But No, you did great. That was Those shows were great. Say, we'll see. We'll see. But you know, that that was a big mistake. Do you know anything you about when you're going to put those out? Or yeah, September 4th. September 4th? Yeah. Are yeah. we the? Did you break that yet? I don't know if I have. Probably oh, not. Oh, shit. We got an official <laughs> scoop right here. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'll, tell I'll tell you the title when I when I release it. Not now. But uh, yeah, man. It was. Uh, it, your sleep is really important. Sleep is so important. Absolutely. And then eating well. You know, people get their testosterone check when they're my age and they're like... Um, but you're not sleeping, dude. You eat like shit, mm -hmm. and you and uh, and your cortisol levels are at a hundred thousand all the time. Well, yeah, your so diet obviously, and your sleep can affect your testosterone levels all of it, and a, in a huge way. Of course. Yeah. So like now, you, now, so now you're low T, and you're gonna get testosterone. Okay, cool. How about sleeping first? Mm -hmm. Get your body optimal, and then tell me what your testosterone Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. That's how I look at it. If you're gonna do that, why not? Build yourself up to be as perfect as possible. Yeah. This way, when you start taking these medications, you don't get start getting the side effects that could happen if you take them. Because there are side effects to testosterone that you know you don't want, like you know high like, lipid levels. Yeah, right. Like you're high. You produce some people will produce way too many high like like red blood cells, and that's one of the worst things that could happen is clotting. And that's something you don't want, and that's why you need to be taking care of yourself, making sure you're checking your blood levels. Like that's one of the things I, I wanted to talk about yesterday but we didn't get a chance to was people who do TRT and stuff like that by themselves instead of doing it through a doctor oh, is yeah. just insanity to me because they're not checking. I asked a guy about like, cause he was like, uh, he's like, I'm breaking out, I'm bloating. And I'm like, how much are you taking? And he's like a TRT dose. And I was like, how much was it? And he's like, and he showed me and he was taking 500 milligrams, which is <laughs> I know five that times. Is. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> it's five. And, and like a lot of, I don't people, know why he's doing it. Why is he taking testosterone too? Like, I, I mean, let's get it out of the bag. So you're going to ask me if I do, do. So actually, let's, you know, we'll start with the first natty or not. So the first natty or not, because ever since I started doing the road with you, people have been messaging me. They're like, is Brian Callen natty? That put me in such a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the fact that that's even a question. My, but because look at me. Come well, on, let's the be reason honest. Why my they mother called me a, a, she, about a year ago. She was two years ago. She goes, are you doing steroids? That's and I went, Isn't that that's such a good the feeling? greatest, well, but I mean, look at me. I, <laughs> I was like, 
What makes you think I would do steroids? What What about my body? Did you look at me with my shirt off? You're like, oh, that guy looks like he plays golf. I wonder if he does fucking. Well, the you know. fact of the matter is, like, if if say I never met you and I saw the way you were on stage and I saw how energetic you are, I saw the way you're able to do workouts, like you're doing boxing and doing all that, and you're 55 years of age. Something that could actually trigger some red flags where I'd be like, that's something I have, would have to look into because it's not like, like you, you don't have a belly on you. You're in very good shape. And that, those are things that at a certain usually after the age of 45, those are usually like, OK, something's a little up. But then you actually end up getting your blood. You got your blood work done. Yeah, but that was. A, yeah. And, and my testosterone was. That's insane. But it's one reading. There's, not, there's free testosterone. Right. Mm -hmm. So my my. So I've never taken anything. I've never taken any testosterone. Mm -hmm. I've never taken any root that would cause high testosterone. I've never taken anything. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't want to. I'm still a little, I think my genetics are, I'm gifted. In you have terms genetics. Of, I have great Absolutely. genetics because I have crazy energy mm -hmm. and I can, I, I just, I just have, I still have a youthful, yeah. I'm sexual, you know, I can mm -hmm. still, all that stuff. So I got a 32 year old. And White. you can still give the pepper. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't. So for me, it was always like I don't want to fuck around with something that's not broken, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. However, it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I'm 55. Yeah. So the fact that it hasn't happened already at 55 is actually proof that you're genetically gifted. I also take care of myself. Though. Mm -hmm. I'm really consistent, right? Yeah. I, I don't eat much, mm -hmm. and I and I always work out. So, um, no, I've never done anything, anything. But I can't fucking wait to. I yeah. can't, I can't like, so my testosterone was 1100. I have mm -hmm. it on, I, I That's sent it, insane. I sent it to Rogan. I sent it to Shab. I sent it to all my friends. <laughs> I go here, motherfucker. That was my, that is my testosterone. Cause high level would be yes. nine, like 900 on the scale. Well, they call me and they go, you don't need any testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that's one that's one reading. I don't know. I don't know what that means. What is that? Whatever the eleven hundred is is whatever. Anyway, it's crazy because I was fifty two or fifty three at the yeah. time. I was fifty three. So the question is, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do. But I want to get a re like, what is my free testosterone? Aren't there different reads? Yes, you okay. want to look at your free so, testosterone, your actual yeah. testosterone, and you yeah, want to look at these people weren't experts on levels. testosterone. Yeah. This was a. I had a. Uh, it was just a, some guy in a lab. No, no, no. I did. It was a five hour uh, <laughs> checkup. It cost me a fortune. Where you do a CAT scan, you do a MRI, you do all the blood work, you do a, a genome to see if you have any weird diseases. You check the calcium levels in your heart. It's mm. crazy. The, well, that's uh, important they, to do. Yeah, the they heart do one. all this shit. Okay, mm -hmm. and I was pretty damn healthy yeah. you know luckily i was yeah and and she said she said uh your fucking testosterone is because i said i want my testosterone checked mm -hmm. they don't do it normally there i can't remember the name of it. it's craig venter's uh company uh in san diego and i did uh and 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 the wonderful doctor there she she was the one who told me not to eat nightshades because i was getting all the stiffness and I, I have an allergy to nightshades but um but then, but my testosterone, she goes, whatever you're doing, like you don't need any testosterone. Just keep doing it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So. What I would suggest though, someone who you could probably hit up would be, and we're not sponsored by him, but anytime he wants to, uh, Derek for more plates, more dates is the king of reading when it comes to your, like he has a whole company that he does the shit. Yeah. And he does, he has his own, uh, like testosterone restorative company. Okay. So, what's his name? Derek, uh, his company, like Derek he has from more plates. Rogan had him on more yeah. weights, more plates, more dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more plates. Yeah. And he has a company, and he's yeah. when it comes to people knowing like blood levels and testosterone levels and reading the actual charts, this guy, there's no one better than this guy. Yeah, he's the. Well, that's he's who you want to go. He's to. the guy. I want to yeah. go to an, a real endocrinologist. When I do it, mm -hmm. I'm going to a real endocrinologist. I'm yeah, you go should. To a, yeah. I mean, I know guys. I have. Mm -hmm. I know some people that yeah. have been doing it, and so I can mm -hmm. go to. I, I got the best doctors if I have to. I'm sure you could. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're gonna actually put this to to rest. Brian Callen, Natty. Natty. Okay. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the second one we're gonna do is actually, uh, especially because you have the fighter and the kid podcast. We wanted to go with uh, one of the legends of fighting. We wanted to do oh, yeah. Mike Tyson, and we're gonna do career wise um, because. I, I'll get into why the later of his career is a little different, but there's so many videos out there of people saying that Mike Tyson is not natural. 
and I actually completely disagree. Because you're, you're talking prime Mike Tyson. Prime Mike Tyson, because people look at his physique back then, and they're like, there's no way a guy at that age was looking like that. Yes, there is. But what they don't take into consideration is if you look at him, because we, when you we go... You see him when he's 13? That's exactly yeah. what I was about to say. What we do before we do these is we always look at pictures because we want to look at people's genetic points. Like when we did Gerard Butler yesterday, we looked at his genetic set point. And it, he is not a genetic freak at all. I know Gerard. I know Gerard a little. Do bit. you? Yeah. Gerard's still a six foot two big kid. Oh, he's a big dude. He's a yeah. big guy. Yeah. Like Gerard is still uh, a big guy. I think he likes his cigarettes. He probably mm-hmm. likes his booze. He probably likes his food. But yeah, when I but, saw him in New York, he towered over me. He's a big. He's dude. a big kid and yeah. and, and uh, wonderful guy. Really mm-hmm. nice person. But um, he, uh, you can look at him when he was younger, and you can see it was. I mean, whether or not, mm-hmm. I, I think all those guys in three hundred. Yes. Were, were I mean, they were CGI'd on top of, I think that... Training like yeah, crazy. Yeah. And well, Gerard was going to do, like, he was offered a movie, I know, and just didn't want to do the training. Really? He's like, I still want to fucking do the, sh- the training I had to for the <laughs> 300. Yeah. Because they were doing a CrossFit thing. They were doing... They were well, it's taxing. Crazy. That's what yeah. we were talking about yesterday. It's taxing to you, like, just because cause people are always like, oh, well, they have celebrity diet and celebrity trainers and stuff like that. Just because you have that, that means you're going to have to work that much harder. And yeah. something like... Uh, a TRT or like even something like Sipionate at like just a slightly higher than a TRT range is going to be able to let you keep up with those workouts because a yeah. regular person, celebrity trainer or not, it's hard. Gerard Butler four three hundred was doing two a days yeah. and literally working out like an animal, like literally yeah. trying to work out like a warrior. Yeah. So but I mean, like like Tyson, the first of all, he was already. Nobody hit harder or faster. Mm-hmm. He was a genetic Watch freak those at 13. Fucking, you don't, steroids don't make you that fast. Mm-hmm. They don't make your body move that way. Like his, his speed was, was, mm-hmm. a set, was blinding. And by the way, at 19. Oh, and by the way, at 17 and 13 yeah. and 14. Yeah. And 15. He was built like a grown man at yeah, 13 yeah. years old. You, you, there are freaks. There yes. are genetic freaks. There that, are. That's why people and say that. The NFL that. has them. Mm-hmm. And some, sometimes boxing has them. But Mike Tyson... You don't become the hardest hitter. Maybe Ernie mm-hmm. Shavers was in, I don't know, but people say, but I think Tyson was the hardest hitter ever. Maybe there are other guys. I don't know. But as far as, far as like, like he could hit that hard from both sides. Razor, uh, what's both his name? Sides. Razor that he actually Razor fought. Ruddick, huge he also guy. hit hard too. He, beat, he knocked Razor Ruddick from here all the way across <laughs> the ring. He hit mm-hmm. Andrew Galata, who is a, basically looks like a, somebody took a silverback Galata looks like a white silverback. He looks like he's a little bigger than a silverback. Is that he's the a little Boston thicker. fighter? No, that's no. the South African. Oh. He is a Dutch monster. Mm-hmm. He's this like blonde, like Galata was a half a criminal, just mm-hmm. a badass. And I think it was, there was another guy, Bosa. He fought Bosa, these two yeah. giant white dudes who were like fucking huge. And he hit, he, I think he hit uh, Galata, one of them, he kind of, he threw a right, like a straight, he just went boom and hit him like that, like just straight in like that mm-hmm. and broke his orbital Jesus, bone. Jesus. It just threw a 14 ounce glove, broke his orbital. Well, the guy's head's this big. Okay. Mm-hmm. A pro boxer with a neck like this. He's the biggest <laughs> guy on the planet. That is a horrible hit thing him like that. Hit him like boom, like down, cut like mm-hmm. that. And his orbital bone broke and he broke one of the bones in his neck. Jesus, okay. Oh How about God. that? And sat him down. Yeah. And that guy was every bit as thick as Tyson and bigger than Tyson. So That's, nobody hit like him. Steroids ain't going to do that for you. Also, the way I look at it, too, because he is a natural genetic freak, already had muscle at an early age. Yeah. Putting on more muscle would not be conducive for boxing. Yeah. Because Well, boxers, the you athletes, want to be more a lot of athletes will take steroids for recovery. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you stay injury free. For Human sure. growth and, te- and steroids. But if you're a genetic freak like yeah. that, to take something that might add more muscle to your frame is going to... Because Mike Tyson is one of the first people that made people realize that speed kills and fighting. Yeah, also, also those trainers, like guys like Customato and stuff, they were old school, old school. guys. Mm-hmm. The boxing didn't even let... A lot of times they wouldn't even let you lift weights. Yeah. They wouldn't. They didn't have steroids. They weren't just fucking steroids. You wouldn't get steroids in that gym. Exactly. They were old school dudes. You had so much to work on. Mm-hmm. To be a good boxer, to be a, like a... St- a guy who's that schooled, like Tyson's technically impeccable as a boxer. Mm-hmm. He impeccable. Said it himself. Mm-hmm. Old school like technique. It's like the way Eddie Futch used to teach. If you watch Joe Frazier, you watch those old dude, those guys out of those Philly gyms, mm-hmm. 
they are like Bernard Hopkins. They are schooled by yeah. masters, by masters. Mm -hmm. Those dudes, they you're not throwing a punch until you understand where to stand. Yeah. Your fit, your it's not punching. It's where you punch from. And your footwork, the way they drill footwork, mm -hmm. the way they drill head movement, the way they drill like a jab, like like it's that 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 old school. Like they, there's no space. Mm -hmm. They just everything. They, they you can't. They they don't even know how to do it wrong. Yeah. They don't know how to do it wrong. Mm -hmm. They're perfect. Yeah, the old Andre guys. Ward's mm -hmm. camp. Like I talked to Andre Berto about this. Like the way they would work on like the, the, the men, those old men, those old dudes who had fought. Like a lot of times there were black guys who fought in the 50s and the 60s and they made no money and they the only thing they could do is shine shoes and do like menial labor yeah. after that so they 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 grew up with nothing man mm -hmm. and they they then they grew up in the ghetto and they died that makes in the you ghetto fucking tough. but what it's not mm -hmm. just that it makes you tough what what it what it also creates is a scientist those men those 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 old time trainers were they were every bit as intelligent Every bit as scientific as any motherfucker in a lab, more so. Like the, the, when they call it the sweet science, you take a guy like Eddie Futch, you take any of those old school trainers. You go go look at the like go look at their corners. Mm -hmm. Those old black dudes, a lot of times, not just black yeah. guys, white guys too. I'm mm -hmm. saying you know, but it was like those old guys just sitting in there they were training. Yeah, those dudes have an encyclopedic knowledge of how the body moves and works. Mm -hmm. Those old Irish dudes that would teach in Boston, like Mickey Ward's camp and stuff. Oh, Mickey Ward. The, yeah. the, 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 the guys who schooled you mm -hmm. were like boxing gyms with those those amazing trainers are. I mean, dude, it's almost like a religion. Like, you don't you don't th throw a punch without. It's almost like Zen and the art of archery. You don't when you when you learn archery from a Japanese master, you better learn how to breathe first. You don't even get to pull. You don't get to shoot an arrow, motherfucker. Shoot an arrow That's just a funny in one statement. year, bro. In one year, you you'll learn how to Japanese. stand. And, you'll learn how to stand and hold that that bow before you even draw back for mm -hmm. real yeah yeah and it's a boxing that is the same way teddy atlas was freaking out watching joe lewis and how how joe lewis's feet were never never out of place mm -hmm. that comes from just years of doing it properly yeah you be careful what you practice because you'll get really good at the wrong thing mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So, mm -hmm. but perfect practice. Yeah. So that's why that's why I said about Tyson. He had old school coaching. Had the, he had the genetics there, yeah. and none of it would have given him a positive advantage. The only thing I will say yeah. is, in the future, when it came to current Tyson, I don't see why. Like when he lost the when he got in perfect shape for the that's a different for the thing. most that's recent a, that's fight, a different yeah. thing. you could say that yes, he probably took something like an HRT, but I still don't think I he's think taking he admitted, steroids. He might have even admitted to that. Well, he said he would take GH. He never yeah. said he never said yes. They actually. They asked him, "Have you ever taken any performance-enhancing drugs?" Uh, drugs, and he said, "I smoked a lot of marijuana." <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't like when they ask him those questions because I don't want to take away from the, no. heart, the work he did. He's one of the best, honestly. But I'm not saying that mm -hmm. fighters. There are look, fighters. There are definitely fighters that take. Yeah, yeah. Popped all and the time. I and I never had to fight on a high level like that, so I'm not going to judge anybody. But, but um, it definitely helps you with the recovery. Yeah, and and I'm sure there are boxers in today's world that that have found there are steroids work well yeah. steroids not, just, yeah. work. not just steroids stuff like epo and all that shit that was one of the things that we didn't get a chance to really talk about at the beginning there's a lot of because people when we talk about lennox lewis with the i don't know if you ever heard of the situation with him and uh razor ruddock with his he would he refused to take a steroid test yeah and because he was not he was an overseas fighter in the wbc it was not in his contract to have to take one so he said he's not gonna take one but they made razor ruddock take one so that was a little sketchy to us. Sure. Um, but you mean and boxing then people were like, corrupt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, people were, and people were like, oh, the WWF wrestlers are tested now. And there's no <laughs> way that guys like, uh, who do we do? Bobby Lashley. They're like, there's oh, no way Bobby, Bobby Lashley. Lashley's on steroids. And it's like, first of all, let's just say your boss is on steroids. So that's a pretty big red yeah. flag. Yeah. But at the same time, there's steroids that are in and out of your system so fast that you can fuck with you saw it like there's testosterone suspension which is the thing that like, a lot of people will take because suspension is out of your system in three days and it's legit like taking a testosterone cycle it's the same thing as taking sipinate but it's in such an ester that it's out of you so much faster Damn. as in taking sipinate which would be in you for two weeks you know stuff like epo that's going to give you amazing stamina for six hours you know like yeah. people will be able to take those things and be able to beat those tests 
But yeah, when it comes to Tyson, I just think it's funny when when they crack down on baseball uh, steroids in baseball. Let them take steroids. Everybody was on the injured reserve list. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't play that many games. Can you tell me yeah. there wasn't a better time in baseball than Mark McGuire, Fuck, Sammy Sosa? That was great. That oh was when God. baseball was Dude. at its best. You, you, if you ever see Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, and Mark McGuire when they came into the league versus when oh they my had, God, like, the before oh, and we after. We were all pictures. so naive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Jason I, Giambi, all those guys. I, I feel like in baseball it should be mandatory. Yeah, you should, if you're not fighting other people, you know. Now the the way to look at it is this: like it's really simple. So, um, okay, I'm uh, you're in your 30s, and your bat speed starts slowing down. Cool, mm-hmm. and uh, and there are young guys coming in, so you're not gonna be able to hit that fastball. You just yeah. can't get your speed, your bat around in time. Good. And then I come to you and I go, "You love baseball? Yeah, it's my life. Good. How much you make? Like I don't know, twenty million dollars a year. Good, good, good. You're 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 pretty. You know, you're a big guy, but you're starting to lose your speed now." I'm going to give you uh, a couple of things to take. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You can put on muscle. And you're going to be able to play the game you love for at least five more years, and you'll make another $100 million. So do you want to take steroids or not? If you say no, you're a fucking you're a idiot. Yeah. And, and if you say no, you're a liar because you never put, <laughs> yeah. in, put in that yeah. position. Exactly. Yeah. Sign me up. Shoot me up with it all. I don't it's, give a fuck. It's like the Marvel. We talk about it all the time. One of the biggest red flags is there is if you've done a Marvel movie as a superhero. That's a huge red flag. <laughs> and people are always like, why you? would why would they take that? It's like, do you realize how many millions of dollars they're getting paid to look like an actual well, superhero? Well, I, to- I told you my, my buddy Todd Phillips had flirting with the idea of, of putting me in due date back, back in the day. And, and he said, I need you to be more muscular. I go to my old school trainer. He's 64. He's a strong man, bodybuilder, been in the game forever. I go, I got to put 30 pounds of muscle on. <laughs> and he, he, he did that. He started laughing. I go, what? He goes, he goes how are you going to do that? I go, uh, I guess eat more and just lift heavier. Right, he, goes, yeah. he, he goes, yeah. He goes, and how long do you have? I go, about three months. He said, <laughs> I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how it worked. And he goes, he goes, um, well, Brian, you're a coat hanger. Let's start there. You're not genetically made for that. So you're not going to do that. And uh, But you can, if you give me two years and I change your endocrine system, we can get you to about 20 pounds. I was like, what? That's so funny. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Like on like the talk shows and stuff after someone does a movie, it's so like normal to hear someone say like, yeah, I put on 40 pounds of muscle in six months. Yeah. And you're just sitting there as someone who knows about fitness and you're like what yep. yeah yep. yeah no you didn't boys i gotta go that Bert, like, i gotta go yeah we're we all finished hit, that was our last yeah. one let's, let's hit the beach just real fast Sounds before good. we go uh thank you for coming on uh if you want to see him make sure to check him out brian callen com, com. Dot com. Uh, oh and brian callen comedy on youtube dot youtube dot brian callen comedy and make sure to slash Brian Callen comedy. Check out the best of show. Yep, yeah, best of with Brian Callen. Sometimes I make some little cameos on. So you that's might right. you're you're gonna that's where you're gonna see the we'll video be in that Milwaukee. Kevin. Milwaukee. Yeah. And then I got. I'm still waiting Austin. for the gorilla video to come out. Oh, dude. my lat spread. It's great. I can't it's wait great. for that one to come see. out. <laughs>